name is Tyler. Welcome back to the channel, guys. We are looking at CCIV's new ice testing where they basically froze the car down to negative 40 degrees and then they tested all the mechanics of the vehicle. And we are going to go over that and we are going to watch the whole video. It's about two minutes. So if you've already seen it, you might just want to skip to the end to get my opinions on this and wrap it into my short squeeze theory. And as always, hit the like button, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And if you guys want to stay up to date with all of these videos, as soon as I make them, now I come cover all of our favorite stocks so hit the notification bell if you guys would like to stay up to date now i don't want to waste any time let's get into it you want to find any and every problem that could possibly occur on a vehicle before it gets into the hands of the customers so that means testing in all kinds of different scenarios everything from the coldest temperatures all the way up to the hottest temperatures in this wrap-up phase we are using um, climate chambers like the one right behind me and we are cold soaking the vehicles overnight down to minus 40 degrees centigrade when we soak the cars every single molecule in the car gets down to that temperature so you get to that baseline and that has all kinds of different impacts on, on the vehicle lubricants change viscosity, they change their properties at different temperatures. The batteries react differently at different temperatures. Their ability to provide power, their ability to accept power when you're charging it. We're going to test the heat up of the interior of the vehicle to see how quickly can we de-ice the windshields, defog the interior and make the cabin cozy. So you need to test all of these things uh, to understand what limitations of the different aspects of the vehicle are uh, and then optimize them. What we're doing today is testing those limits. So we're gonna make sure that the car's starting reliably, starting up every time. So when we swipe a card, we press a key fob, or we use a phone to get in the car, it's gonna do it the same way it would when it's nice and sunny in California or it's like dead of winter in Minnesota. What I really liked was the quietness in the cabin despite cold temperatures. Typically, interior components get noisier as it gets cold, and that was a great experience to see how quiet the interior stayed. Our customers don't expect 80%, they expect 99.999%. And the difference between 80% to that 99.999% level is really what defines a product, it defines a car company, that's why everybody is working so hard. One team, one goal. We're out to produce the perfect vehicle and satisfy our customers 100%. So this does look very good for anybody investing in Lucid Motors. They said that they met all of their targets. So as far as defrosting, the battery performance, the, the functionality of the vehicle under high stress conditions, negative 40 degrees is really, really cold. But one thing I wish, wish, wish they had touched on is for somebody like me, I live in Michigan. So winters get very, very cold. People don't like one even shoveling the driveway, but they don't like having to take forever to heat up a car I, I mean I don't like to if I'm late to do something I don't want to take 20 minutes to warm up the car and defrost it or go out there and scrape it so if you're paying a hefty price 161,000 after the tax credit comes in for these vehicles I just wish they had disclosed like exactly how long it takes to heat up the car uh, compared to like a gas vehicle because a gas vehicle be anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes if they can do it in the same similar amount of time that'll be really good now if it takes longer or it's towards the longer end that won't be as good so that's a concern as to maybe why they didn't disclose that or maybe they figure a lot of consumers are going to be in warmer states and a lot of people don't care about that anyways whatever the reasoning is i don't think it's too big of a deal but this does look good for any lucid motors investor because it doesn't look like we will be halted or delaying deliveries even further because of problems with the functionality of the vehicle it all does look good to go and this is the thesis i have around the short squeeze we just need some good news like i have previously said in my other ccv short squeeze video we just need some good news if we can get good news like a delivery day or anything else we are going to fly i mean ccv is going to freaking fly the short interest is over 30 percent we are getting short squeezed down to the ground and you could see it in the share price we have just been going down and down and down and down 
all the way almost until institutional blue chip investors got in the stock at $15 per share. So if we are gonna short squeeze, if we are going to bounce, it is gonna be from right here. And I am very confident in this. I've been loading up my position. Now this is a more of a share position for me just because I don't know how it will react after the merger. I do think it'll be positive because more people will be willing to get into it once they're investing in actually Lucid Motors. But the valuation is 35 billion. So it has come down from its high at 100 billion. So that is all good there. And that does make a lot more people want to invest in the company under $20 It's definitely a buy and has the potential to short squeeze at least up to $25 $30 relatively soon I think before the merger that is where we will be about $25 to $30 per share gonna go ahead and wrap it up right there i hope you guys got a good insight into what i think is gonna happen with ccib and why i think it's gonna short squeeze we just need some good news at this point the short interest is there the overall interest around lucid motors is there people are scared because the sector has been getting beaten down and institutions and hedge funds have taken full advantage of this driving these stocks down even further making people not want to invest in them even more and then once you get good news you see loads of people piling in and then shorts have to cover their positions and buy back in as well as other people buying in that did not short the stock so that is my thesis behind it if you got any useful information or some insight out of it hit the like button comment down below and subscribe to the channel i would greatly appreciate it i'm gonna get out of here you enjoy the rest of your weekend until next time peace out